Jesus. Schau bitte hin, so wer da bitte dann ist. Praise the Lord. Please let's have a seat. I count it a privilege to be given the opportunity to be part of today's, this year, International Day of Peace. I want to salute our father in the house, the host of today's program. And I also want to honor all our fathers who have spoken. They've said everything about peace. I'm just going to add a new dimension, not really new, but an aspect of what we can do to shape peace together as Christians. We all know that the chaplaincy is a ministry. They are ministers of the gospel, taking the gospel to secular places, doing the same thing that we do in church. Praise the Lord. Um, before we start, I just want to read um, John chapter 14, verse 27. John chapter 14 and verse 27. Jesus was speaking to his disciples as earlier they said at the introduction. He was preparing to leave. He wanted to comfort the disciples. He wanted to comfort us. And he left with this one word. And we need to take it very seriously. He said, peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart. Peace is a thing of the heart. Peace is much more than um, the relationship where she are not being confrontational or being able to live as neighbors without talking, without having any physical um, fight or confusion or physical disagreement in terms of argument and all of that. You can ha have that kind of relationship with your neighbor, yet in your heart you don't have peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Peace is a thing of the heart. I think it's a troubled heart that manifests physically in confusion with others. Being, able, being unable to relate with other people. When we are troubled in your heart, the tendency is that the same thing that is going on in our heart gives us pictures of what we think other people should be that they are not. And that makes us to be aggressive from time to time. But I want to let us know this afternoon that Jesus said, I have left you with peace. And that makes us not only receivers of peace, we have become sons of peace. We have become ambassadors of peace. So if we are talking about shaping peace together, I don't think there's anybody in the world that God will want to look on as peacemakers than his church than his people, than his redeemed. Because you can only give what you have. As believers, we have been given peace. Jesus is not only our Prince of Peace who reconciled us, because our peace first starts with reconciling with the Father. Because from the day a man fell in the Garden of Eden, peace was taken from the earth. When he came, he restored that peace by reconciling us to the Father. Then he gave us peace within ourselves. And now say, now live in peace one with another. And so, we cannot talk about peace and expect people who don't know what peace really is to be able to shape peace than we should be. In fact, we are the salt of the earth, which means we are the peace peacemakers. We are the ambassadors of peace. The Bible says, as he is in the world, as he is in heaven, so are we on the earth. And our Lord Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace as we have had earlier. He's a prince of his at his arrival, no matter the confusion. Everywhere when he comes, there is calm. And so God is saying, you are sons of peace. You are, as I'm, the Father sent me, I'm also sending you to go into the world and to bring peace wherever you are. Because until we leave this earth, the son of perdition cannot reign. Why? Each time he rears his ugly head, when we step in there, we bring calm to that situation. That is our assignment on the earth. And as believers, we must be conscious of that. We know what is currently going on from the pandemic. That is alone is putting so much people in fear and torment. 
They are so much in dread. Some are so afraid they are going to get the virus and they will die. Some are in their house. All the windows are locked. They are peeping through the windows somewhere, somewhere around the world. Full of fear. No peace, no rest because of that virus. Some are afraid because of the economic collapse. Job layoffs. Bankruptcy. Depreciating values of, of, the, of whatever currency they, they have and whatever stock they have amounts and kept in the bank. That fear is a torment. We have fear of what is going on in the society. There is so much rape everywhere. People are no longer safe. Children are not safe. Women are not safe. Even men are not safe. Let's take our nation as an example. We are fearful of traveling. We don't know where we will travel to on with our cars and then our car break down and then out of nowhere, we are face to face with trouble. With our killers or assassins or kidnappers or whatever name or under what guise they operate. This fear is a torment in the soul of every Nigerian, which is far much more than the, the, problem, the, the peace we have with our immediate neighbor. There is killings everywhere. We are far away. Every typical Nigerian hope to have peace. We should we pray to have peace. It may have not gotten to where you are, but I want us to know that our, our brothers, our friends in other parts of this nation cannot stand there to, to us. Because of the war, all of the problems, dissidents, killers, and all that. So peace has become an important community, a commodity. It has become something everybody is craving for. But God will want us to know. Jesus said, I am not promising you that in the world you are going to have it all good. There is no how we can debate peace. How did the United Nations come into existence? After the, uh, the First World War, it was an instrument of global peace. Okay, let's okay, let's come around the round table. table. Let's decide let's how we are going to it. But we know, oh, how, oh, in spite oh, of the United oh, Nations, oh, we have the yeah. Second World War. And after the Second World War, we had another war called the Cold War. We are not carrying arms, but we are fighting. There is economic war going on everywhere. There is cultural war. There is educational war, technological war. If we are to follow what goes on in the media, that coronavirus is a creation of some, some other nations. So come and subdue the world. If you want to believe. So we see that globally, how do we find peace in a circumstance as we are? Praise the Lord. And we realize that it is not to us as believers. It's not alien. The Bible says we should not be ignorant. It should not take any of us unawares. For those out there who do not have the secret, we have, we have been let into the secret of the world. Others don't have that secret. We have. Isaiah 61 to 3, Jesus told us, or the Lord told us, He said, Rise and shine, for the light is come. The glory of the Lord will rise upon you. When? He said there is darkness over the earth and gross darkness the people. Darkness over the earth, earthquakes, hurricanes, droughts. All of these are what you cannot control. You can control your relationship with your fellow human being. How do you control the weather? Praise the Lord. So men are fearful. We don't know where next. There are some parts of the world, they don't know where next. The next hurricane, the next earthquake is going to come. Some have lost everything. They have become homeless overnight because of natural disasters. That's darkness over the earth. Dark, dark, darkness, darkness over the people. Men are becoming, are becoming more wicked. More wicked. Children, Children, babies are not safe. We hear of, you know, babies of under one year being raped. There is terror everywhere. Let's be sincere. But how do we shape peace in a circumstance like ours? But Jesus promised us that in the midst of all this crisis, he said, I've given you peace. Like we have, been, we have had earlier, peace is not the absence of trouble. But peace is Jesus Christ in you. He demonstrated it when he slept at the bottom of the boat in the midst of a very grave storm. And the disciples called him, Master, don't you care we perish? 
He said, why are you of, why have faith? Oh, you of little faith, have faith. I wonder what he meant. He wanted the, the disciples to know that as long as I am here, I want you to do exactly what I've done. Sleep while the storm is raging. Because the Father has got your back. And that's the same thing the Lord is telling us this afternoon. We are going to shape this. Let's be realistic. The world is not going to get better. There is no dialogue that is going to bring the peace. The utopia anybody expects cannot happen. If man and man cease not to fight, where comes the virus? Praise the Lord. And all kinds of challenges that is beyond human control, natural disasters. Men's are being dead. You know, the book of Luke chapter 22, verse 26 told us that. He said, in these last days, men's heart will fail them because of looking at the things that are coming on the earth. So you are not involved in a physical fight with your neighbor, but your heart fails you at home. When you hear, when you see what is going on, you're under terror and dread. But the Lord said, no, don't be. Why? He said, lo, I'm, be I'm with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, the peace I'm giving to you is not the one the world is giving. The world said, let's agree together, stop fighting, don't shoot. But people are still troubled. Every day you go to the hospital, maybe a blood pressure rise, they ask you, what are you thinking about? So many so all kinds of diseases that originate psychologically. That means the mind is under torment, no mental peace. But that's what Jesus Christ came to give to us. So that you and I can have mental peace in the midst of the chaos. We should be, be, be in, inside a bubble. You know, you know, balloon is like a bubble. Or, you know, when we are young, we we'll, we'll, uh, mix up with water and then put, um, we cut the stem of um, copper and then we we'll put it inside and we we'll blow. And then there's a bubble. Jesus actually wants this peace is like that bubble. Floating everywhere, oblivious of what is under. We should be like a, sh like a ship or a boat on a water raging with storm. All we are doing is floating. But how can we get to that point? How do we get to that point? How can we have peace in our soul? So we can have genuine peace with our neighbor. I just want to look at two points and then we are going to, because other points have been looked at. One of the well, ways we can have peace, peace, especially in a nation, is what the Lord told us. Paul told us that in the book of uh, second, uh, is it, um, first Peter chapter, first Timothy chapter two, verse one and two. He said, first and foremost, prayers, intercession, thanksgiving should be made for all men. And for leaders. Why? For one reason. So we can live in peace. So we have an obligation to not just talk about peace, but to pray about those who make decisions. To pray so God can have an influence. Because our prayer gives God the legal right to intervene in the decisions of man. Prayer opens the door for God to, to influence the minds of men. Prayer mitigates the influence of the devil over the human soul and over the human mind and human decisions. And so if we lose this very important responsibility given to us as believers, that will enable us to live in peace then we have opened ourselves for trouble. How often do we pray for our leaders? I know we are all guilty of criticizing them, but God didn't ask us to criticize them. He said, pray for them. Not because they are good, but so that you can live in peace. So that they may make laws and take decisions that engender peace within your community. 
We are becoming reactionary. We react instead of acting. Prayer is an action. Now we are reacting after the deed has been done. And then we come back home and start shouting, no, 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 why not? But why did you not pray to preempt such decisions? So we must not fail in that very important responsibility if we want to shape peace. No matter how somebody's boiling, when you pray, God goes down and pours water into the fire and everything just goes down. And there is peace. He said, pray for all men. We can pray and subdue the forces that makes men to behave anyhow. We have that power. And as long as we are still here, we are expected to put that power into action. If we really want to see peace within our communities. It's an error for us to believe that government is going to give us peace. It's commonly said, if you want peace, prepare for war. People go to war because they are looking for peace. Now, how does war now produce peace? That's human wisdom. That's man's way of trying to procure peace for himself. But that's not God's way. Praise the Lord. And as we have, been, we have had over and over in this conference, we are all agents of that peace. We are all ambassadors of that peace. We have to take this peace into the world by our prayers, by our actions, by our words. We have to allow Christ to live his peace through us. We are supposed to know how to have peace within our soul, in spite of what we hear. A lot of people say, I hear it said on the television, I hear it one on one. Coronavirus is a new normal. I say it's not my new normal. It cannot be my new normal. There is only one thing that is normal in life, change. Before Corona came, something else. Corona will go, another thing will come. If we accept it to be a new normal, then it's going to be a new normal. But we have the power of prayer to change the situation. And that is what we must remind ourselves. So prayer is, an, is what God has given to us. For our personal lives, Paul also told us in the book of Philippians, he said, we pray and make your request known unto God. And God replies, you with peace. He said, then the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. So the first answer God gives to you when you pray is not the cheer you ask for. It's peace. Peace is an advanced payment for what you're asking God. Don't be troubled, I'm in charge. It gives you peace, a deposit of peace. How often do we pray and commit those circumstances that is taking our sleep in the night unto God? You are not fighting with your neighbor, but you know you are not at peace. You are troubled by situations. You are troubled by unrealized expectations. You are troubled by the things you hear. You are fearful whether you are going to lose a job. Somebody called me, please pray along, but I land they will lay off in our company. That person is no longer sleeping. It's no longer at rest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we can shape peace by committing our situations and circumstances onto the hands of God in prayer. That's what he asked us to do. And so if we really want to be ambassadors of peace, if we really want to be sons of peace, if we really want to be peacemakers, if we really want to enjoy peace within our soul, one with another, then we must learn to commit every challenges every circumstances every situation into the hands of god and not depend on our wisdom to take action god has promised us the reply of peace for every prayer we pray praise the lord we see also in the book of luke chapter 21 verse 36 he said pray that you will escape all of these things that is coming on the earth you can wish them away but you can escape it Praise the Lord. I believe the, uh, Isaiah 60 makes us aware of that. That's nice everywhere, but you're untouched. And because you are like a bubble in the midst of that darkness, you are just floating. That's why the Gentiles come to say, how are you doing it? How come we are all troubled and nothing is happening to you? And then you show them the way. 
But if we are like them, what is attractive to you? Like, what will attract them to us? What will attract them to us? He said, trouble will be everywhere. But I will arise upon you and my glory shall be seen upon you. And then they will come. Why? They are seeing the difference in your life. They are seeing the difference in your circumstances. They are looking at you that you are not troubled. You are at rest. Whether with what you have or what you don't yet have. Whether with the latest news of one evil, one evil or one calamity or the other. Whether there is a new spike of coronavirus. You are not under tension. Praise the Lord. Then they will come. Show me. Tell me. How come you are able to stay calm in the midst of this trouble? And then we tell them. He said, pray to escape. This evil that shall come on the earth. Much more than ever before, I believe that believers, we are supposed to be very knowledgeable. The Bible says we should not be ignorant. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy chapter 3 told us that, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Can you wish that away? Jesus said it. The Lord showed us by his Holy Spirit. Let me give you a picture of the days that you're entering. These last days, perilous times, difficult times. Some translations say perilous men also will exist. Men who will lose everything about conscience. Men that will no longer be placated. Men that all your effort of making peace will not work. He says such are the people that will exist in this last day. So that's the days we are in. But how can we enjoy peace in the midst of all of this crisis? Does God want us to be agitated? No. He wants us to trust him. Praise the Lord. He wants us to trust in his ability to protect us. That's all God is asking. Believe that I'm going to protect you in the midst of this crisis. Believe. Nothing new that has not happened before. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego were sent, thrown into the fiery furnace. That was a situation. But they trusted God. They believed. Daniel entered the lion den, not agitated, at peace. He landed peaceably. Even the lions were amazed. Normally people <laughs> we come across are jumping. But how come this man just landed as if nothing is happening? He knew the river of peace lived within him. That's what God is asking of us. If we will ha allow the peace of God to rule in our heart, then we can really shape peace. We'll be able to, because shaping peace is being able to minister to the heart of others. Letting people come to that point of rest. Because peace is rest. Peace is tranquility. Peace is harmony. Like Daddy, uh, you know, they defined earlier in his introduction. Peace is everything good. When an Israeli tells you shalom, he's wishing you everything good. So that's his nature. That's his love. And he has given it to us freely. We only have to receive it by faith. You saw the first point there. How do we shape it? Receive it by faith. First of all, receive it to yourself. The peace you want to make with your neighbor, have it. Because when you are troubled, you cannot have peace with your neighbor. When they say good morning, your reply will not be nice. Hey, good morning. Ah, uh, kilo de, did I do anything? Uh, am I complaining? Why? It's, it's not the person. Your soul is troubled. You did not sleep all night. You're on that torment of fear. The Bible says fear has torment. Peace is the antidote for fear and dread. So we should have peace within ourselves. We should receive it by faith. And that comes with trust. Knowing that God loves you. He will leave you, he will not forsake you. It doesn't matter what is happening. Like the song we, 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 we just listened to. Out of darkness will shine the light. Praise the Lord. So we must learn to appropriate the peace of God in our lives by faith. Just like every other blessing that the Lord Jesus Christ purchased for us, we receive them 
by faith. And then they become a reality in our lives. It's important we will need it in this time and in the days ahead. Praise the Lord. Your heart and my heart will not fail in Jesus' name. So we talked about looking at uh, uh, praying, having faith. And the last one, you are a peacemaker. You are a son of peace. You are an ambassador of peace. But that takes compromise. You can't have peace without compromise. Even in a family, you must compromise. If you stand on your point and say, no, I'm right. Husband, I'm right. I will shift ground. Wife, I'm right. I'm not shifting ground. Children say, this is my right. You know, children have been trained to tell their parents, it's my right. Or like in the past, when we cannot look into the eyes of our fathers and our mothers. Now they look into your eyes and say, Daddy, Mommy, it is my right. And I want to have it. But if we want to have peace, starting from our home, we must learn to compromise. We must learn to let go. We must learn to shift our position. We must learn to surrender what our rights are. If it's your right to have that stool and somebody wants to kill herself or himself, taking that stool from you, let him have it. That's what Jesus taught us. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, from verse 38 to 45. So if somebody says, go with me one mile, take two miles. If you want to have your jacket, give him the coat also. Don't greet only those that greet you. Greet everybody. So it, it's all the circumstances of compromise. That's what Jesus taught us. We can't have peace with our neighbors if we don't learn to compromise. Praise the Lord. We compromise our position. We learn to let go our rights for peace to reign. I want to close on this. The disciples asked Jesus, should, the, should this, the, the, the sons, should we pay ta a tax? Are we supposed to pay tax? We are Israelites. We are Jews. Are we supposed to pay tax? What was Jesus' reply? Of course, Jesus knew that as Jews, as Israelites, as Hebrews, they were not supposed to pay tax. But what did Jesus say? He said they should pay for peace sake. So that you don't offend them. So we must get to a point when we know when to concede our rights. I know we must be aware that we are not unduly trampled upon. But when our, sometimes our rights and our entitlement are being contested for to the point where there is it's going to tip into a, a boiling point and overflow, at such point, you can concede your rights. Jesus taught us that and he demonstrated so we cannot shape peace in our environment, in our community, in our families, with our compromise. We must learn to lay down our rights. Husbands and wives must learn to concede their right to one to another. Why? For the sake of peace and tranquility. Because that's where God commands his blessings. I want us to take home today Two things. One, we have a responsibility to pray for our nation, for our, for our leaders, so that they don't keep making decisions that deprive of us, deprive of, of, of peace. Let's not wait until when certain decisions have been taken, then we do a vigil, trying to repair a broken portion. We take it as a responsibility every day in our homes and in, in our churches when we rise up to pray. And the Bible says, Paul said, first of all, he did not say that should be your last prayer point. Because he knows you're living in peace. It's necessary for every other thing you're asking him for. He said, first of all, so let's go home today, making up our mind. Let's pray for our leaders. Let's start from Nigeria. Let's pray for our community. Some communities are not having rest. They say one million boys fight with cold boys, this, that. Pray for that community. Arrest it in the realm of the spirit. And you see it diffusing like a smoke in the wind. 
Let's pray for our leaders, our presidents, our governors. I know it's difficult to pray when you see the, you know, like the road we are coming from. All you want to do is to be cursing. How can we have such roads when we see millions flying all over the town? Praise the Lord. But it takes obedience. When we look at the end result, that is much more important for you to live at peace, to pray for them, than just to fix a road. There are so many other things. Even fixing that road, pray for them. Lord, let them not sleep until they fix this road. Put this road on their table. Keep praying. Don't say we pray for you. Keep praying. If you have not gotten the result, you have not reached seven times. Seven times is when the result comes. Seven times is when the prayer is answered. Yeah. He said, dip seven times in Jordan. And then the flesh came out as a baby. How many times is seven times? Seven is when the flesh became like a baby. Praise the Lord. We saw Elijah pray for rain. One, two, three, four, five. He kept praying. He did not say, well, we are praying. We have God promised. You know, in his due time, in his due season. You know, the ways of God are, you can understand his ways. No, Elijah didn't take that stand and that position. So sometimes that theology is not applicable. He kept on praying. And he kept telling the servant, look, is there any sign of change? Is the clouds changing? And he said, wow, I only see, maybe I don't know whether it's the seventh time or the tenth time, whatever, but I believe that the seventh time is when the result comes. Because seven is when God steps in. And bam, there was a mighty rainfall. And that terminated three and, three, three and a half years of drought. Let's not cease praying. So many people who are in cage, in bondages, in their own homes and families because of fear and torment of what is going on. I want to speak to you wherever you are that receive the peace of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you are yet to know the man of peace, today is an opportunity. Ask him to come into your heart. He's waiting to come in and give you the peace that no man can give to you. Maybe you are expecting something from God, you have not gotten it and you are no longer sleeping. I want to assure you that God is never late. Keep on praying. The Bible told us that Angel Gabriel showed up suddenly to Zachariah. He said, Zachariah, your prayer of 10,000 years has been heard. Now I have come. So your prayer is, is heard. It's heard. It's receiving attention. But meanwhile, let the peace of God that pass understanding guard your hearts. I want us to just close our eyes as we take a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Thank you because you are the peace giver. You are the prince of peace. Thank you because what man cannot do, only you can do it. You are the only one that can quench every fire. Lord, in this International Day of Peace, we pray that not only so you your prayer is, is hard, it's hard. You have also given us that peace within ourselves. And you have made us to be makers and agents of not do, only you can do it. You are the only one that can quench every fire. Lord, in this we have had all that is needed from the first speaker till now to share peace, to cause peace to that not only you have received grace to begin to put them into effect in the name of Jesus. And we use this this opportunity to speak to every troubled family. We have peace has been eluded them. And we speak peace, we command peace to return in the name of Jesus. Over our nation, we speak peace. And we said, let the God of peace give us peace by all means. As he promised us in the book of Thessalonians. Peace by all means. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Shall we say God bless you, ma?